Hey, it's Court Howell here, producer of Mayberry Man on the Mayberry Man podcast, and I've got Greg Shell, co-producer of Mayberry Man. Greg, yes. thanks for joining us. Oh, sure. Great to be here. How's the weekend going? We're at Mayberry Days. Oh, it's fantastic. I'm back at Mayberry Days, uh, one of the probably the biggest Mayberry Festival in the world. And uh, we're here on our premiere weekend where Mayberry Man, our movie, is showcasing. Couldn't be better. We've had theaters filled with fans enjoying the movie, discovering it for the first time. A lot of people here haven't even heard of the Mayberry Man movie. Yeah, yeah. You know, I think what's going to happen is word of mouth is going to start spreading like wildfire because people have been coming up saying, hey, we heard about this movie. We heard it's really good. And uh, all the response has been really good. So I feel really blessed and very honored to be one of the co-producers of the movie. All right. Well, you're in the hot seat. So I okay. have to ask you. Uh, seeing the movie on the big screen for the first time, what did you think? Oh, you know what? I think Mayberry Man is a great little indie film. It is a comedy, it's family friendly, it honors the Mayberry spirit, which was very important to your brother Stark, who wrote and directed the movie. And I really think that it's a great time to be coming out with a movie like this. The entertainment is wholesome, and I think a lot of people are going to be surprised as well. Uh, Stark uh, threw in a lot of Easter eggs from the Andy Griffith show. Yep, absolutely. So uh, the fan, the super fans are going to love it. And even the people that aren't really familiar with the Andy Griffith show, I think are still going to love a wholesome romantic comedy movie. And uh, I couldn't be more proud. Excellent. Now, Greg also took his father, Ronnie Shell to see Mayberry Man for the first time last night, right? So tell yep. me a little bit about the Ronnie's reaction. Well, it was great because I was sitting right next to my father and you know, my father was on two episodes of the Andy Griffith Show. So he's, I'm a legacy. And uh, he was laughing and jabbing me with his elbow. And so I think it really worked because my dad's a tough critic. And so for him to actually laugh out loud, I think really, it, some of the comedy really worked. Excellent. So I have to ask a, a question. If, if I don't like the answer, we'll cut it out of the podcast. Very good. But your dad worked with, with Jim Neighbors. Yes. Quite a bit on Gomer Pyle. That's right. Um, what did he think of our Gomer, Chris Bauman, his, as the tribute artist for Gomer? He's not actually playing Gomer. He's playing a, a guy, a fan oh, who shows up at a festival pretending to be Gomer. So it's kind of its own little character, but what did he think of our, our, our Gomer? In the oh, movie? you know, my dad really loved the Gomer, uh, which was Chris Bauman, actor Chris Bauman, who uh, played the Gomer in our Mayberry Man movie. And my dad got a kick out of him. He loved all his facial expressions. You know, he had his own little twist on Gomer. And I think my dad really appreciated that because he knows that these tribute artists are just regular folks that get dressed up, and they practice their own little thing, but they always bring their own personality right. to each character. Alan brings his own thing to Floyd. People bring their own thing to Barney. People brought their own thing to Gum. Yes. So it, you know, in the movie, we're not recreating the Andy Griffith show. It's a, it takes place at a festival where fans dress up as the characters and they don't call themselves impersonators. They call themselves tribute artists because they don't try to be replicas of Barney and and Gomer and Ernest T and all that. We weren't trying to find the best impersonator for each character. We're, we were trying to find entertaining, you know, talent. <laughs> Real doll. <laughs> Go away. Welcome to Mayberry Fest. Judy, Judy, Judy. How <laughs> the hell you do that? Okay, come here, listen, listen to me. I don't care how much it costs, but who I have to pay off, all right? We're out of here. I'm not gonna stay here a whole week. Calling a great <laughs> Last year, this time last year, we were actually filming here in Mount Airy during Mayberry Days, but it was obviously obviously very scaled down yep. Mayberry Days last year. They didn't even have a parade last year. Yeah. Uh, what do you think? You've been around town. You were at the par you were in the parade today, right? Oh yeah. So yeah. how you know is Mayberry Days back in it's, full swing? Yeah. Mayberry Days is back. I mean, as back as it could be. I mean. The streets are completely crowded. The weather's perfect. This is a beautiful fall day in North Carolina. And I just couldn't be more happy that all the people have come back and all the kids are around and we got the, you know, bluegrass bands playing and all kinds of restaurants are open. And the, I mean, I just couldn't be happier. May, Mayberry Days is definitely back. Great. So Greg Shell was a co-producer from the beginning on this film, but you also ended up being in the film in a pretty significant way. Maybe you want to tell us a little bit about how that came about. Yeah, so uh, when Stark and I were kind of going over early drafts of the script, 
you know, he had mentioned a few times that he thought it was very funny that there was a guy who sort of looked like me that was around the Mayberry world who made a documentary about Mayberry. Because I had made a documentary about Mayberry. So then he suggested, well, why don't we pit you two together as sort of doppelgangers on the opposite sides of the spectrum? One guy being sort of very serious, me trying to compete with that, that person. And it just sort of developed from there. And so it became this kind of running gag throughout the movie, which you'll see, where we're competing against one another. And then it's sort of a surprise as to what happens with that relationship. And I'll wait till you see it to yes. figure that out. Hey, stop slouching. I'm paying you by the hour here. You think Briscoe's gonna help you think again, pal? Can I go now? No. Do you mind? Just, all right. Say Mayberry. Mayberry. Maybe. You ain't rubbing my head. Hey, come back here, you little brat. All right, that's it. Of course, you did actually make a documentary about Mayberry several years back. And then the other filmmaker in the in the Mayberry Man movie is Chris Hudson, who just released The Mayberry Effect, which is a really uh, well done documentary Absolutely. Uh, that's out available now, like on all your streaming platforms, Amazon, yep. iTunes, all that. And uh, I highly recommend that. Have you seen, been able to see the Mayberry effect yet? Yeah, so the Mayberry effect, well, I'm waiting to see it today on the big screen. Okay. But I've seen enough of the clips to understand what it's about. And certainly when Chris was making the film, he would show me something. He said, well, what do you think about this? And I'd sort of give my take on how I looked at things. Um, and I love the fact that Chris Hudson you know, explored all kinds of different things in Mayberry. It wasn't just all rainbows and unicorns and happy days because there are certain undertones and maybe things that, you know, people struggle with here and there, little yeah. themes that, you know, kind of the good and bad. And I, I'm glad a, a true documentarian needs to do that. Right. Sort of remain right. neutral and kind of discuss the entire world of Mayberry. Not just the good, but some of the bad as well. Excellent. So in case you can't tell where we are, we're at Wally's service station in Mount Airy. And this was one of our filming locations. They have a replica courthouse and jail. We have a, a wonderful scene in there. Uh, our Otis tribute artist has a great little performance, you know, locking himself up. Uh, you know, we had a little walk and talk, a big kind of sweeping cinematic shot that took place right in the parking lot here and in front of the Wally service, which is just a great tourist spot for anybody who's a fan of Mayberry. If you come to Mount Airy, you got to stop at Wally's service. Yeah, and I might mention too, this is where all the squad car tours start. Exactly. So there's a line of Galaxy squad cars, just like you see in the Andy Griffith show. Tourists can come, they can get in the squad car, they have a nice tour of Mount Airy, getting shown all the spots like Andy Griffith's home place and various places. And so, what a great place to be here at the and, Wallace Felix Station. Yeah, And the granite quarry. Don't forget the granite quarry. Oh, yeah. You know, Mount Airy is very famous. They're very proud of the granite quarry. Yeah, yeah. It's a huge granite quarry, like right down the hill here. It's I, giant. I hear you can see it from space. You can see it from space. We, we learned that on the tour, actually. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Hopefully they can see our Mayberry Man poster from oh, space, Oh, it's pretty too. good size, right? Pretty good size, I would say. So there's a lot of noise here. Hopefully our, our, our voices are carrying above it, but we're kind of competing with the bluegrass band that's in the Mayberry Man movie. It's Baraka Valley. They're, they're performing live here at Wally's today. We also have uh, Peanut, who's a star, makes a cameo appearance in, uh, in the movie. And Peanut is a desert tortoise, you know, just one more uh, celebrity now that uh, he's in the, the Mayberry Man movie. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And we're just, we're also so thrilled that a lot of the fans who have already seen the movie have come up to us today and just thanked us and say, you know, Thank you so much for making a movie that really honors the spirit of Mayberry. And that, to me, I think is the best kind of compliment we can get. Right, and this was a crowdfunded film, a right. community effort, and we just always want to say thank you to the fans who helped make it possible by having the, putting your faith in us as filmmakers. All we had was an idea and a script when this all started a couple years ago. Yeah. And uh, you know, you had to be patient, waiting for us to finally deliver a film, and I think I mean, the reactions have been wonderful. Oh yeah, I, I mean, you know, and I've, I've had some very tough critics, you know, in my in my fr friendships here, uh, but so far so good. Everybody's really loved the movie and we hope you do too.
And you can actually get the movie, either you can order the DVD on MayberryMan.com, uh, and it's available for uh, rent and purchase on Amazon Video, and you can uh, watch it right at home. If it, uh, we're going to be in theaters. We're we're kind of doing town by town theaters. Yeah. Uh, you can see the locations of those uh, theatrical engagements on our website, MayberryMan.com. And if you come out and see it with a group of Mayberry fans, I mean that is the ultimate experience. That's right? the best way to see it in the theater on the big screen with the surround sound. The music's great. You're going to love the visuals. Hopefully you'll get a lot of the inside jokes and Easter eggs from the Anna Griffith Show, but generally we just want you to come and enjoy the movie. Absolutely. Well, Greg, thank you so much for spending some time with us on sure. the uh, Mayberry Man on the Street podcast. Yeah, A little great. rough and tumble, but uh, hey. we get it done and we want to share more behind the scenes action with our fans. And uh, thanks so much. Congratulations hey, you, on the film. Congratulations to you as well. Thanks. We'll see you next time. See you soon. If you want more videos about The Andy Griffith Show, be sure to hit subscribe and click that little bell icon so you're notified whenever we post a new video. Thanks for watching.